Yo guys, what's good? Stixon, your boy from Intuitive Designs. Now, this is the first Design Diaries video where I kind of go behind the scenes and then show you guys what I do throughout the week as a graphic designer in the streetwear industry. So yeah, let's jump straight into it. Right guys, every day before I go into full on creative mode, I like to do kind of like a warm up design to get the creative juices flowing. I'll spend like 30 minutes or less to create a design. And if I can't come up with anything other than decent, I'll just stop and then work on the projects that actually matter for the day. Uh, personally, I find this technique really, really effective, especially when I have a busy day ahead. So this design is inspired by this tattoo doodle I saw on Instagram. I can't find the original post anymore. So sorry for not giving you the credit, whoever you are, but it's pretty basic. It's a Japanese Oni mask cracked open and then there's a smiley inside of it. I do have this sad emoji from my stock library. So um, I'll just use that for this design. Right now I'm using the select subject tool to select the outline on the mask and then just crop it out from the background. So I'm quite content with the placement of the design so far. I'll probably just keep it until it is finished. Right now, I'm playing with the colors, making it more vibrant. After that, I'll add a small text in the middle and then just wrap it up. Right guys, today is Tuesday and I just got a text from this manager friend of mine who manages this metalcore band saying that the project has all been green lit. That is great news guys. So I'm gonna show you how the project started and how it looks like in the final draft. I've done several revisions for this project and I'm really happy that they're trusted in my vision on this. Starting off, I've created two entirely different logos plus symbols combo for the band um, just so they have more options to choose from. Personally, I love logo too. It just comes off very unique and none of that typical metalcore aesthetic. It's got a bit of Y2K vibe to it as well. Not sure if you guys can tell, but yeah, it is my personal pick from these two. This one looks pretty good as well. I kind of connect each of the letters with these lines between them. But instead of just, you know, straight lines, I added some curves so it's not as predictable. Let me zoom in and show you guys what I mean. These curves here. Now I went with bolder font as well so it stands out more. Um, if they use the logo on tour posters or, you know, stuff like that. Unfortunately, the band did not like either of these two logos. They did reinforce their vision with me though and wanted me to go down this path more. Something like this. Um, this logo was done by me like eight years ago, so I've updated the overall look as well. Now, the band also requested for two merch designs. These are what I've come up with. The first one got that retro poster look. It was unintentional, to be honest, because um, the design started off in black and white, only added the blue tone and post, and it somehow achieved that retro look. Um, not to mention the yellow color on the text kind of solidifies the retro theme even more. Lately, I've been wanting to do something different. That's why I opted for a bigger subtext. Unlike my usual design recipe because I kind of want to experiment more with designs lately. If you follow me on Instagram, you can probably tell. Merge 2 is pretty good as well. I used the first logo for this design. So again, the band can visualize these logos being used in real life settings. Now, out of all of these designs and logos, the client only liked Merge 2. I had to revise the rest, which is fine because ultimately the client is the one using them. Um, I'm just a designer that helps them get what they want visually. Um, they didn't like Logo 2 as much as I do, sadly, because again, it doesn't reflect what they sound like musically, I guess. <laughs> 
So the notes they gave me to revise was they wanted to maintain the serif font and no sans serif because they kind of want to distance themselves away from the older image. After a couple of days, this is what I've made. I've um, sent it to them and fortunately they've all been approved. Now I did create two variants of the same logo so they can use both logos in different settings depending on the medium of course. So as requested I kept the serif font but instead of using the same one I did some work on it and then got it to be a lot more bolder than before. So it's kind of like a merge of the previous two logos. For variant one, I added some swirls as requested. Um, and as for the symbol, I just took the letter A and then added the geometric and symbol inside it. Now as for merge designs, I only changed logo for merge two and it works just as good. Um, if you're wondering how to do this effect, I've made a tutorial of it already. Um, watch it on the pop up right corner right here. Now I did take some time to work on merch one. It looks completely different now, um, but the essence of being a metalcore merch shines through. And I can confidently say that this one will be the best seller among these two. Uh, speaking from experience, of course, you know, there's no really 100% confirmation for this kind of stuff. Now this design could work as a back print as well. And then for the front, they can just put the logo as a small print on the right chest area. This whole project took me about two weeks to wrap up. I usually work a lot more faster, but I was working on way too many projects during the first week. It was just crazy. Um, I am dialing it down now and focusing more on YouTube. So you'll see me upload a lot more from now on. Luckily, the client was very patient with me. So shout out to Artifact. Go check them out if you like metalcore stuff. But yeah, essentially, this is how I do my designs and how I present them to my clients. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below, guys. I'm always happy to hear your feedback. As for this design, though, I am selling it right now. So if you're interested, send me a DM on IG and let's work it out. What's good, guys? It's Wednesday today and I'm feeling very inspired and I want to take the chance to practice some new skills that I learned recently. Um, I found this image from Pinterest. I don't know who's the original creator, but credit to you. Um, I want to recreate this artwork, but turn it into a shirt design. But I'm not just gonna copy one to one. That's just lazy, you know? Um, it's gonna be more like inspired by it now. I've done all the material sourcing and, and it only required like three stock assets, which sounds very simple. So I'm ready to get started. Now, first, there's just gonna be a lot of extracting assets from the background. So I'm gonna skip through all of the boring part and then jump back in again when I'm ready to do the effects. People always ask me how I blend two different assets so seamlessly. The key is to find assets with similar angle and with lighting that are at least close enough. So you do need to spend time on preparation. In this case, I was lucky enough to find this hand from Unsplash. It was shot dramatically with strong contrast, which is what you want when you create a vintage shirt design like this. Sadly, I couldn't find a syringe stock with a similar composition but you can get away with that in post using the overlay technique which I'll show you guys in a bit um, so now I'm using the mask layer to brush out the parts of the finger to make it realistic like um, it's really holding onto the syringe after this I use the curves tool to try to match the composition of both of these stocks
Now is the time to add the snake into the design. This one is harder to extract than the previous two stocks, um, just because the snake is black and the shirt is also black. So using select subject is probably out the window. I'm still gonna give it a try though, just in case. Alternatively, I'm going to use a combination of both the lasso tool and the quick selection tool. I'm only going to extract half the body of the snake only. After that, I'll drag it to the main file and then just try to find a position that flows well with the design. Here's how I'm fixing the composition of the snake so that it blends better into the rest of the design by clipping a new layer above it and then setting the blending mode to soft light and then using the brush tool in black and white to darken and lighten the parts that I want um, depending on the light source. However, this technique could really backfire if you do too much, it would come off as really really fake. Luckily, in my case, this snake stock photo only requires some minor correction. After this, I think I'm ready to start working on the colors. I feel like the background looks too empty so I've added a starburst behind it to fill it up. It also feels a lot more vintage now but color wise the overall design I'm still not 100% sure so I'll keep testing it out. What I do know is I want the main color to be red so I'll change the background to red to kind of carry the vibe of the design so that the rest will only have a tinge of it.
All right, guys, I'm pretty happy with how it all is coming together. I'll wrap it up for now and then add the text later during post because this took me longer than an hour already and I've got more projects to work on today. So I'll stop for now and then show you guys the final result. That is all for today guys hope you enjoyed this kind of video format so instead of just one design one video i've decided to compile several projects that i work on for a week and then show them all to you guys in just one sitting let me know what you guys think in the comments below hellstar tutorial coming next week guys so subscribe and turn on the notification bell so you don't miss out see you on the next one